Hey guys, I'm Zeta Sage Plays. Welcome to the Wild China Trail. This is the final habitat in Tecton Zoo. I hope you're as excited as I am. Let's go. So obviously I've been thinking about this habitat for quite a while. And for the final habitat in the zoo, there was only one choice of animal, which is the giant panda. For me, you're not a big zoo unless you've either got giant pandas or you've had giant pandas. And Tecton Zoo is no exception. But the pandas aren't all we're going to have in here. I really wanted to challenge myself with this last habitat to try and build a really modern, uh, with a small M, habitat rather than the uh, sort of white concrete, fairly small, one animal at a time habitats that we normally have. So the reason this is called the Wild China Trail is that, um, as you will have seen in the intro, we also have Asian small clawed otters, and we're going to have some of Drax's birds as well, um, some of the ones that live in China, to get a real sort of a Chinese trail feel going on. It's going to be really big with a path running all the way through it for the guests, loads of different viewing areas, and it should be a really modern zoo habitat. So I guess I should explain where we are first of all. So this last piece of land in the zoo is next to South American giants. Just behind where the camera is here is the back of the primates area. And to your right is land of the reptiles. And then the other side is the zoo border. So this really is the last little bit of land left in Tecton Zoo for us to build in. So what we're building here is the Asian small clawed otters habitat first of all. So these rocks are going to surround an underwater viewing gallery. I've already got the water in and done a few adjustments of the terrain. So this is going to be the first thing the guests see when they come into the habitat. There's going to be a lot of rock work in this habitat. The, all the boundaries within the habitat for the different animals are going to be made out of rocks. And basically I'm making one piece of rock work here and spending loads of time on it until I'm really happy with it. And then I'm basically going to copy and paste this all the way around the exhibit. I'm just making the odd changes here and there so it doesn't look like it's been copy and pasted. That's always, for me, the best way to make habitats with lots of rocks in. Um, if you try and do each rock individually, you can be spending like a month on one habitat. Um, so just get one set that you're really happy with that you think looks really natural and then just use that over and over again. Uh, we're going to be really careful with the glass barriers here so that they are, uh, as you can see here, as low as they possibly can be so that you can't even see that there's any glass on that side of it and then higher on this side to uh, stop the otters jumping out. I'm doing something I don't think I've ever done before which is using the fake uh, tree trunk to make the bank of the sort of little river that we've built here and some of the conservation grass panels to join that onto the actual terrain behind it. Uh, it looks really good when it's done. I'm definitely going to be using this technique again. Um, sure somebody's done it somewhere before uh, but it's not something that I've done um, I don't recall seeing it but it's definitely a really good way of doing things like this once you put in a few rocks and a few more grass panels it looks really natural um, so you can see the join there we'll get rid of that with some more rocks and end up with something that looks really like a sort of high-end zoo which is definitely what we're going for with this habitat I'm also going to make sure that all the terrain behind the water is slightly higher than the uh, terrain that the guests are on so that when the otters aren't in the water the guests have still got a really good view of them. Um, we need to do some decorating underwater as well because obviously we've got an underwater viewing gallery so you don't just want bare uh, terrain under here so we'll fill all the sides of it in with rocks um, and then we're going to do loads of terrain work on the uh, bottom of the pool and put some underwater plants in there as well just so it looks really good when the guests are looking through the underwater viewing gallery um, takes a bit of time doing this especially when it's underwater which makes it a bit harder but definitely worth doing uh, i'm going to build up some more of the rocks around here as well the pandas are going to be in a habitat behind and to the right of this and we're going to do loads of terrain work to make that much higher so that the guests can see both the animals from this vantage point when the pandas are in that part of their habitat and then it's going to curve around in sort of an L shape so there's a dedicated panda habitat with much closer viewing for the guests uh, when they get to that part. A uh, lot of work on the paths in this habitat, it was, uh, it was a pain 
but definitely worth doing. It's a, obviously, it's a trail, so we need a trail for the guests to walk on, uh, which means we need paths. So lots of paths going into this. This is the slight raise in the terrain I was talking about to make sure that the otters can be seen. And then we're going to cover up all the edges of the glass with more rocks. So we get a really nice sort of zooey kind of look to the front of this uh, the front of this area here. Next up, we're going to start doing a little bit of work on the giant panda habitat. It's really important that the guests can see them from down there, as well as in the dedicated viewing for them. So I'm raising the train up and checking that it's definitely going to be visible from down on the path. And then we're going to slope it down to where it actually meets the path. And I want to make sure that you can see the animals from absolutely everywhere on the path. That is the idea. So I'm going to do loads and loads of terrain work and smoothing and things like that to make sure that it looks good. And also start building up more of the rock work so that the otters can't get out of their little area. The pandas obviously won't be able to get in to the otters, but we're going to use loads of different uh, fences and mesh and things like that to keep the pandas where we need them to be. Now, don't worry, there is going to be white concrete <laughs> in this habitat, as you'd have seen in the intro, but that is going to uh, be sort of the, the outside border of the habitat. It's not going to be keeping the animals in. It's basically going to be keeping the guests in, and it's also going to be keeping the birds in. So obviously we have no flying birds in Planet Zoo, but thanks to the uh, genius that is Drac, we have his workshop item birds. They look really good from a distance and putting them in here is really going to um, help sell the whole Chinese vibe. We're also going to use some of the audio speakers to play bird sounds in it as well. Uh, and when you walk around it, it is really effective. So that's the paths done. Let's get rid of the placeholders and bring in the concrete. Oh yeah. So <laughs> apologies, there is no speed build for this um, huge roof and mesh. The reason for it is that I actually built this months ago for our wetland zoo as a giant aviary for cranes and flamingos. But I decided that what I really wanted was a flamingo trail, which is what we had Romano Palacios build and a little lavery for the cranes. And this just seemed to throw the whole zoo out of balance when I put it in there. I think it was just too, uh, too tacked on for the wetlands, but I really liked it. So before I deleted it, I blueprinted it and I've been waiting for an opportunity to use it ever since. And this was the perfect time. It is the perfect size to completely cover this habitat, uh, which I am really happy about. And yeah, this is gonna keep all the birds in. It is completely covered in mesh and it took a long time to build. I'm so happy I've finally been able to use it for something. Uh, we're also gonna use a modified version of the primate area sign to sort of announce this area. Obviously pandas, uh, well in a real zoo, pandas would be the biggest draw in the zoo. For some reason in Planet Zoo, they are not the most popular animal. Uh, don't really know why. But um, so yeah, it's not actually called the China Trail in the zoo, it's called the Panda Trail. Um, I wanted to call the video the China Trail to sort of emphasize that we've got multiple animals in here. But in the zoo, um, with pandas being the most popular animals in zoos, you really want to sort of emphasize them. So I've gone with the name of the Panda Trail to entice people uh, into this area and just let them know straight away that this is where they can see the giant pandas. If you've not followed this series and you're wondering why I'm not putting any red pandas in here, the reason for that is we've already got them in the zoo, in the uh, house of the red panda in the forest area. And that is one of my favorite builds in the zoo. I really like that one. There's absolutely no way I was gonna sort of tear that down and move them over to here. So that's why I've gone with the Asian small clawed otters and a few Chinese birds instead to get this uh, trail done. So we're gonna do a lot of fixing up on this mesh and build an entrance area. I'm using the European cable piece, which is really good for building aviary supports and anything to do with mesh really. Uh, always use that now for anything to do with mesh. And then for the entrance itself, we're gonna build a sort of an airlock. So obviously it's not really an airlock. That would be <laughs> really inconvenient if you visited the zoo without a spacesuit on, but um, a double door system to make sure that the birds don't uh, fly out when people are coming in and out of the habitat. So I'm just going to use some of the glass modern panels, uh, some mesh and obviously some concrete to uh, build that. This will be really simple. The archway is the attractive part to, uh, to get people in here. And then this is going to sit underneath it 
and just be dead simple. Um, it doesn't need to distract from what's above it. So it's gonna be completely enclosed, meshed on the sides and on the roof to keep the birds in and just somewhere for people to, to walk through and get into the trail. Now, I wanna hear from you guys on this appeal in Planet Zoo. So the most popular animals, as in the ones that are most appealing to guests, are the African elephant, the lion, and the gorilla. I think the giant panda should outrank all of those because in my experience, they are always the most popular animals in the zoos that are rich enough to be able to keep them. But what do you guys think? Do you agree? Or do you think that the elephant, lion and gorilla should be higher than them? Um, or maybe you think something else should be the most appealing animal in the zoo? Let me know in the comments. I'd be really interested to see what you guys think and uh, whether you agree with me or not. Also, DLC time is just around the corner. Uh, so this is a good opportunity to discuss the future of Tecton Zoo. So I'm calling this the final habitat because as it stands, this is the final habitat in the zoo. But there are two things that I've wanted to have in Tecton Zoo for a very long time. And they are basically contingent on Frontier adding certain animals or behaviors into the game so depending on what frontier do in future maybe even in this update who knows there is a possibility of one or maybe even two more builds in the zoo but they are definitely relying on things that may or may not be added into the game so unless that happens then this is the the final habitat let's get back to the otters so I'm doing a load of work on the vegetation here using some of the upside down conservation grass uh, conservation flowers rather hiding in a mud bath as always and then building up even more rocks to bridge the gap between this and the panda habitat. Just using the same group of rocks that we created right at the start. And you can see me just adding a rock here, taking away a rock there, and just getting a really natural looking pile of rocks that's not gonna distract from our beautiful giant pandas that are gonna be added uh, just above where you're looking at here. So let's get the barriers in for the pandas. So these are gonna be a real mix. I'm, I'm just using steel mesh to put them in just so I can see where I'm going and uh, what they're gonna look like. But this is gonna be a mix of the chain link. That's gonna give it this sort of aviary feel. And then glass viewing windows for the guests. Um, we're also gonna work on these rocks here to turn them into a waterfall. I thought it'd be really cool to have a waterfall right in the middle of the habitat that again sort of bridges the two habitats together and makes them look more like a cohesive whole. Um, it also makes sense because it gives the water in the otter habitat somewhere to come from. So just using loads of the special effects pieces and then some more water in here, a little pool just for the uh, the pandas to chill out in. And there's those rocks again um, to uh, make the edges of this pool look nice. Uh, none around the front of it, obviously, so that they can get in and out. The animals in this game are not the best at negotiating <laughs> rocks. And then we're gonna start turning this um, these barriers into the mesh so that we get a sort of aviary feel around this part of it and then we'll have glass around the other side so the guests can see in with an unobstructed view we've got a few null barriers hidden in there as well where the rocks are doing the job for us and we don't need barriers going to use a load of the grapes and the ivy to cover the central part of it up just so it looks more attractive and i thought the waterfall could do being a bit bigger as well and then we're going to add in the amazing netting workshop item by haribo that we've used before and i'm going to incorporate this into the barriers that we've already put there so that it all looks like one um, piece and we're going to use the curved barrier top option to really make it look like netting uh, that's sort of hanging down. I really like how that looks in the end. I'm also going to put a cheeky little drink spot in up here just to try and drag guests up to this part of the viewing area because, as you know, the guests, once they've seen an animal, um, it doesn't really matter where they are. They don't really bother um, sort of going elsewhere to see it unless they haven't managed to get a good view. So this is another reason for the guests to get up into this top part of the habitat and look down on the, the climbing apparatus for the pandas here. I'm gonna put some bamboo in here to sort of block out the view and make it more immersive. And I'm going with the earth path, which I've never 
ever used before because it's got that bright reddy orange look which is uh, sort of the color that everyone associates with China. Then we're gonna add in Drax Birds, the Common Hill Miner and the Eurasian Hoopo. Those are both found in China and they just sit really nicely into the habitat. And that is the China Trail done. Stick around for the cinematics. I really hope you like this one. I can't believe this is the final habitat in Tecton Zoo. It's been like 16 months of building this. Thank you so much for joining me on this uh, journey and building the zoo. I'll be back very soon for the grand tour of the entire zoo and of course adding it to the workshop so that you guys can walk around it. Thank you for watching as always and I'll see you soon. Bye.